Meatball Molly McCann versus Diana Belbita, the Warrior Princess. Don't worry, these uh, these names do get better the further down we go. Um, this, Bobby, we're starting off with my Nuck If You Buck fight of the night. Ooh, this is the Nuck of the Buck. That's interesting. Or I I have a reason for this too. Molly is coming off of back to back losses right now. Um, she's already beat Belbita before. She's an upper body fighter. She's not going to kick you. She's not going to do any of that type of stuff. She's going to take abuse. She's a warrior, but she's got some KO power too. Belbita, um, she can use all three phases of the game. She can use striking, kicking. Um, she can even do submissions and some grappling. Is she going to be able to against Molly? I don't think so. She's got fast punches, but they are weak elbow punches, boy. I was watching her tape. She gets on top and starts punching like this. <laughs> no wind up or nothing just from the elbow just from the elbow i it looked like what a child would do um she's good at passing guard but like that's the only thing i could uh get good from her she's not great at anything um i i really don't think she's that good of a fighter who's she beating nobody i i think molly wins this one uh knuck if you buck it might be a, a quick night i can see molly getting the ko what do you think about this one I'm off meds on this fight. I've waffled. I've schizoed on it so many times, violently just back and forth, because as we were talking about before we started recording, you just never know what's going to happen in women's MMA. You just never know. You think you got it figured out. You think you know who's going to win, and then some craziness happens. And Molly McCann is kind of like a perfect example of that because – Back in my article writing days, the last time I talked about Molly McCann was when she fought Julia Storyarenko. And in that article, I'll own up to my to my L on that and say I was heavily encouraging you to put your money on Meatball Molly because she was fighting in London. Her and Patty were on the same card, I believe. You know, Molly's British, Patty's British. They always try to give the British fighters when they go to the UK on these London cards give them easy gimme fights to, you know, get the home crowd all riled up and excited. So I was, you know, thinking she was a lock against Storyarenko and she got viciously arm barred in the first round. So that leads us to something very, very interesting. As uh, Ben just said, Belbita is a grappler who is going to look to press that advantage in this fight. I'm kind of, once again, waffling on this because, while I do think ordinarily McCann does have the grappling advantage, I just watched her last July get armbarred by what was supposed to be the inferior grappler in the first round. And I also watched Meatball Molly do like a day one white belt mistake where instead of trying to escape from the armbar attempt, she rolled into the armbar attempt and made it worse yeah. and applied more pressure to her own arm instead of trying to escape the situation. And so that kind of left me scratching my head a little bit confused. But once I look at the odds that I have on DraftKings, Molly McCann by a sub is a plus 700. For her to win by KO, TKO, DQ is a plus 400. The only thing that you're losing money on is a minus 105 if you pick Meatball Molly by decision. If you just take the money line, you're not going to be very profitable because she's a minus 258 and Belbita is a plus 10. If you do Belbita by KO, TKO, you get plus 1,200. If you do sub, you get 1,400. I do agree. I think this is probably going to be a finish. Somebody's going to get finished. It's just I, I waffle back and forth, but... You know, I guess uh, I guess I'll go Meatball Molly by the plus 400 KO TKO. It yeah. really is difficult. I really feel like I had it figured out, but women's MMA is unpredictable, and you're always surprised by honestly how bad it is and how it still unfortunately has many years to catch up to men's divisions except for strawweight. Strawweight's pretty decent. Every other division's barren and dead, and you know that as fans. But – I mean, if you're going to give me a plus 400 on Molly McCann and I have to watch the equivalent of like a turd sandwich versus a giant douche battle it out in the octagon, 
I guess, you know, plus 400 is pretty good odds. Meatball Molly does have some pretty nice, impressive, uh, you know, first round or second round spinning elbow finishes on other cans. Belbita is looking like a can. Yes. Uh, the UFC definitely has an investment in Meatball Molly and trying to get her to stick around in the UFC, if nothing else, to put her corpse on those London cards. And, you know, the Patty Pimblett relationship that she's fought to cultivate, that her career is hanging on by a thread from his coattails. So, based on all these factors, sure. Meatball Molly plus 400, I think that's a really great value for a fight that should be very whelming. Absolutely agree, man. I think that we're seeing eye to eye on that one. Uh, you're making me nervous. I thought you're going to take Bell Beat. I'm glad you did it. You better start listening to the Better in Green podcast. You will not regret it. Trust me, trust me, trust me. And hey, I'm Dean Blandino. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Better in Green. Eh? To Better in Green. Eh? To Better in Green. Hey, eh? listen in and cash out. That's what it's all about. Come on, let's make cash now. We always on spot and we cover all spot from the bottom to the top. Hey, shout out to Ethan, shout out to Wyatt, shout out to Ben. Welcome, welcome to our podcast. Better win green.